Oh, I've got something a bit different to try and fix today. What is it? Can you figure it out? So this actually belongs to a work colleague and it's... Shall I tell you what it is now? Or shall I... Uh, oh yeah, I'll make it wait. I'm going to tell you what it is later. Anyway, I'm going to take this board out. So this chip here, you can see it's got a bit of damage to it. That chip is blown. Apparently it was charged up and then it didn't work anymore. Or something, it was overcharged or something. Anyway, that chip there is blown. I don't know about anything else being bad on it, I've got no idea. But obviously I've got to take this board off, take the battery out because it's got a 18650 shoved in there. Take that apart and desolder that chip and put a new one on. Now new chips have arrived. Hopefully it's the right chip. Uh, it looks a bit right. Um, it's probably the right number we got off it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The guy wasn't too worried, he said, well, give it a go. If you can fix it, you can fix it. If not, then oh well. So we'll give it a go. And just on the side here, you can see there's a USB port right there. That's for charging, so that's like a charge control chip. So, these should be the right ones here. Should be. Let's find out. So the first thing I'll do is take this board off and get the thing out, because of course I can't use hot air on this thing in this casing, because I end up melting something. So, obviously I need to be mindful of that, so I need to take this board out. And obviously don't you know, overheat the battery either. So I'm pretty sure I can... Maybe I can just lift the board and stand it out on the side and be away enough, I'm, I'm not sure. But we'll take these screws off first, see what we've got, and um, go from there. Screw it over set. Big Clive would be proud. Oh, those are tight. Tight, cheap screws. Not necessarily a good thing. So we round off otherwise. Okay, so that screws out. Let's see how much movement we have in these wires. Is that gonna be enough, you think? I mean the battery can maybe pull out. I don't know. Maybe I'll just take the battery terminals off and get the battery out of the way. I think holding it out of the way like this would be okay. And I'll just remove the battery. BT positive. Ground. Yeah, okay. I think I can manage that. Got my iron here. It's got a completely inappropriately sized tip. But that's fine. I can work with that. If I can get it to melt, then I can work with that. Am I supposed to put some fresh solder on this? No, there we go. I'll put fresh solder on when I take the thing apart. When I um, reassemble it. So be careful not to short the two wires together. So let's take the battery out and put it to one side. There you go. Wires separated. And I think like that would be alright. That's just... That gives me, I think, enough clearance to be able to work on that. So I've got my pan of ice. So I'm going to try and do is somehow clamp this in the panel vice. I'm not quite sure how. Um, yeah. Let's make it out of these wires in case I break one off, shall we? So we have red, green, blue, and then white. Okay, just in case any break off, or if I have to remove them and then forget later on. Um, actually, I think I might use helping hands rather than panel vice because, um, I don't know, can I get down there? I don't think I can really grab it like that. I can use that to steady the body, maybe. No, it's not going to work. So I'm going to get helping hands instead, little crocodile clip things, because they, they also want to worry about the heat, whereas this I don't risk melting it, because I really like this thing. Right, so there we go, all set up there with the crocodile clip on there. You can see pin one dot just there, so that's pin one here. And hopefully these chips have got the same dot on them somewhere. We'll have a marking. I should really get my microscope out to do this, but I'm kind of kind of bothered. We'll figure it out anyway. So pin one's there. I'll just hope these are exactly the right chips. We're not completely sure because we can barely read the number on there. So let's get it going. 
we might need to drop the temperature down a little bit on here. Got this set for MacBook balls, which is probably going to melt this one. The tweezers. And these tweezers are bad. These bad tweezers. Okay, the chip off. Right. So I'm going to just put some fresh solder on this, which is going to be leaded solder. So in there three. Still a bit hot for this. Now that hole in the board isn't actually a hole in the board. Well, it kind of is. For heat sinking, it comes out the other side. Bit of an interesting setup. That's why I did it. Right. Some flux on here. I've actually got too much solder on here, just take a bit more of that off. I might use the finer wick. Because it's got a thermal pan in the middle, you see. Out, that'd be great. There we go. There's the new part, and let's get a close up on this, shall we? Do a comparison between the two. Right, so your left one is the also the new one, and the right one's the old one, which you can't really get much from. TP4056, there you go, you can just see it there. So, different brand, but hopefully the right chip. So, let's put this thing on there. So, flux. Again, back to the inappropriately sized soldering iron tip. To make sure the solder the legs properly. Not sure. 
sure we'll get one of those. go. Question is, will it work? Guess I'll have to find out. Okay, let's put these screws back in again. Also, let's position the battery and the board back in the right place. Got to solder it back on yet. Let's just take it back out for the time being. It's in the way. Because I'm very tired. Okay. Solder the battery back in. Then we can try it out and see what happens. That should be interesting. Now I'm going to use something to hold this up. I need to just touch up the solder a little bit on this thing. If I'm lucky, it's not going to work. Oh. Is there any power in this battery or not? Doesn't appear to be. So inside here is the bits for it. This is the top cover which goes on there. And it's got like a cover GSB port and stuff on there. So that should all line up in theory. Yep, there's the USB port. Well, that's not great. Barely lines up. It's not a great line, is it? Okay, those line up. That's fine. So let's chuck some screws in this. Best fit for those. Try the other one. That's not the best fit either, but it's slightly better. Okay, so in theory, that's supposed to be like a USB light on the bottom. That's power light. So, yeah, I think it's completely flat. Let's charge this up first before we try it out. Put these bungs in. So I plugged in the charge and my USB charger um, shut down over current. Never seen it do that before, but it does. That's not a good sign. Let's pull it back apart again. Well, this is a bit weird. So if I plug it into the charger, it shuts the charger down saying over current. And I think it do quite a bit of power. Um, but if I push the buttons now, it comes on. So that's the, the light that goes on the bottom. 
and then here we've got a UV, you probably can't see it on camera, but I see that one glowing. It's a little bit of purple glow just there in the middle. So it's got a insect killer thing. So I should now I can actually explain what it says. So it's a camping light and insect killer. So it's, it zaps some mosquitoes, and you actually see there's one in there. Trap. Did one. So it's got the high voltage section in there and it uh, zaps the mosquitoes. Maybe that's why it's over current because it's um it's being shorted out by a dead bug. What do you reckon? Clean those out. See if that makes any difference. Maybe that's what's wrong. The battery's also working because you know it powers up. So it is a bit curious about what's actually generating the high voltage on this thing because there's not a lot to it. Definitely interesting. Don't know. Maybe it's built into some a different part of the unit. Maybe it's inside there or something. It does some other driver circuitry. Because it's got a red wire going to ground over here. And you've got K1. B positive. DT. So know, maybe it's got like a little driver circuit somewhere. Which you can't see. Maybe it's down the other end. Because you've got the D section down here. Maybe it's in there. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Don't know. Let's do some measurements. Right. So I've actually lifted the board out and have a look on the other side. That sort of stuff. Just check that. It all seems okay. Um, and I've checked voltages. The battery voltage is about three volts. That doesn't change when I plug the charger in. So I've got a cable here. Um, so there's no power getting through to the charge circuit, it's just pulsing now. I thought, well, the, the fact that it's overloading means it's probably a short, right? A dead short. So you've got a capacitor right here, service mount cap. Let's check it. I've already got this set to... Oops, oh, zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. If I stay zoomed out, that gets the zoom in dropping. Right. So on resistance, right. I should get... Uh, at about 0.4 or so, and I've got a decent connection on the probes. The Shikos cap, 1.4, so we're getting one ohm resistance across here. So it could be the cap is bad, or this isn't the right chip. There's a resistor just here. What's that one? Measuring 1k, that seems alright. But as soon as that cap is right next to that chip, which got really hot, I'm guessing that cap there is damaged. Alright, so who knows what it is? It's probably just some kind of smoothing cap of some kind but as it's measuring a short that's not good is it so I'm gonna take that cap off I'm just gonna use my soldering on I should better do it with that just blob it and we'll take it off and see what happens now it's half off let's measure the circuit See if we still have that low resistance. No, now we've got microns. So yep, that capacitor's gone. So that is what's wrong with that now. Now also got no way of knowing what this capacitor is supposed to be. So I'm going to grab any old capacitor and chuck it on and go from there. So I'm pretty sure it's an 0805 size. So it's my 0805 kit. So I do have a one microfarad, so I'm going to put one microfarad in there because there's a good chance there's something like that in there because it's you know, physically quite big and uh, quite a chunky one so I'll just go for the biggest one and chuck it in Alright, let's get some fresh solder on this Get my better tweezers, well my better cheap tweezers I'm just going to solder with the iron, I'm not going to use hot air for this. 
it'll be fine. Doesn't have to be perfect after all, it's just a capacitor on a cheap piece of electronics. Yeah, let's see if I can get this to sit properly. Check for a short just in case. No, that's fine. Just plug the charger in, so it happens. Yay! Okay, and we have a red LED glowing. This probably you see a glow there. So that's the charge light coming on. It's fixed. Okay, so it's on the other side of the board there. I'll probably just clean up, get this burnt flux off there. Some of that is a burn from the original failure. This, you know, the hole through the bulb with the chippers, like I said, one that passed straight through. I'm actually wondering if I should put some kind of heat sinking on this to try and keep it cooler because when I had the charging just then, I did that test, that chip got quite warm. So it's working, but it's getting a bit hot. So I think maybe it needs some bit of thermal mass there to help that. Now, this is a ground pad, as is the connector on that USB connector. Maybe if I linked across here the bit of wire, just bridged between the two the pieces of wire, that would help to suck some heat to the connector, um, which would then go to the other connector, which is plugged in. Um, is that a good thing? I don't know, maybe. Certainly a consideration. But I think it needs some bit of thermal management there for that chip, because I think that's probably why it blew up in the first place, just overheated. Um, I don't think I've got any thermal pads, or um, thermal pads, little mini heat sinks I can chuck on there. Not ones that will fit, it's a pretty small gap in there. And there's no gap to put it in, so I haven't got any heat sinks I can put onto that chip either. So I think if I just put something on this side, um, it will help. How much gap do I have? So you've got a bit of a gap there. So I think I might just do that, is run a wire from between here and here, just to help with the thermal management just a little bit. It's going to help slightly, not be much. Okay, so I've got the wire stuck into that thermal area, through the hole. Bend over to get the connection, I'll put some flux on there, just give it a bit of a solder. Just on the very edge, I don't want to get too much solder on it, otherwise it could be a problem. There we go. Just need some kind of thermal conduction. That's what I'm looking for. Thermal conduction, there we go. So that'll do. Um, obviously I don't have melt the connector by putting some cheap on the soldering on. Now I'm going to clean this mess up here for this flux. Get that clean up and we can put it back together. Again. Yeah, it's pretty bad that burn there. A lot of that is from the, uh, the failure. It's already like that. Honest. Messy. I think I'm not going to get much better than that actually. I think that's going to be it. Okay, that'll do. Let's put it back together again screws back in at least and um, get them in place. Sit like that. lens keeps on relaxing and dropping down as a bit of a pain. Stay, stay, stay. So I've got it cheap. The lens is a bit loose. Zoom section, because I, I think I paid 
I mean, there's 200 bucks for this lens, I think it was something like But I knew they were a lot more than that. But that's because this one's got this weakness. I might pull it apart one day and see if I can find out why it's a bit loose. Okay, so it's on. Let's put the top back on again. When I took those bungs out, screws are still in the lid, so I can't find them. Right. Uh, when the bungs went flying off, I've got to try and find it when I'm on the floor. Uh, I may never see it again. I'm right. find the other one. Well, I found it. It bounced about two feet. Okay, I've got this little bumper thing goes on the bottom there. It's like a diffuser. Goes like that. That's what I was going to do. I was going to check for the charging voltage. Charging, the light comes on. Charger in, there's the red light, this side's charging. It's drawing 0.9 amps right now. And I might just leave it on for a while, see if it you know, goes bang or fails or anything. Might record it in case he gets a smoke or something. Still doing point nine amps. If I turn a light on, what happens? Count still point nine amps. So it looks like it's current limited to point nine. Drop down to 0.8 amps. That connector's getting warm, so that thermal heat sink and I ran that wire, it's definitely working, so I'm going to take some heat away. It's only slightly warm, I can just barely feel anything, but it's obviously doing something. Actually, if you look here, too, I didn't notice that before. The um, casing is a bit warped, where it's got really hot, but a chip failed. Yeah. Well, it's the drawing point of an amp. See how long it takes to drop down. So, if you want to see more of my videos where I'm fixing things, check out my playlists at the end of the video or other place on the channel. Go and check those out. I've got heaps of stuff there. Make sure to subscribe. Click the bell icon. If you don't click the bell, you won't get notified about new videos, and you get and you will miss out on anything I do in the future. So, make sure you click that bell icon to see more. I do lots of stuff, test, test equipment repairs, reviews, all sorts of things. This is just a bit of a weird one I'm doing right now. I, I do things like this as they come up. So anyway, make sure you do those things and give us a thumbs up. That's always helpful. Get you later.